actually did venture outside. I've been a bit of a homebody ever since COVID, really. I've kind of been um, at home. Really, it's kind of by design because of the work I've been doing the last couple of years has allowed me to work from home on my laptop. It basically gives me no incentive to go outside anymore. So apart from nights out, apart from rare occasions where I might go to like an art gallery or something for a private view, most of my time is spent indoors. Again, outside of going to the gym and going to, you know, purchase some food and whatnot and kept myself fed. So I'm spending a lot of time indoors, too much time indoors, actually. So it's quite nice when I do venture outside. And I say all that to say, I did venture outside on the Friday to go get a haircut. This is something that I usually get around the corner, local boss man, local uncles. I go get a skin fade and whatnot. But unfortunately for me and maybe a lot of other guys in the UK, I consume too much US content. Because I consume too much US content, my standard or the what I expect from a skin fade, what I expect from a haircut from a barber is something that I compare to what I see from the US content I consume. So I look at people like Odell Beckham Jr. and I see his skin fades and I'm like, oh, damn, I can't get that level of a fade in the UK. So it makes me sad and it makes me depressed. But I put up with the shit that I can get over here. But over time, I started to realize that although the places I go to around my area are amazing, right, the pros of being able to put on some white socks, a shitty pair of shorts and a vest and put on your Crocs and go around the corner and literally five seconds walk and pop into a barbershop with a local Ghanaian uncle, Nigerian uncle, Jamaican uncle and get a little quick fade is great. It's also amazing, right? But unfortunately, Fortunately, with inflation, most of the local shops and barbers around my area, most of the local ones, they charge just as much as you would get charged if you went to a fancy one. So before I'd pay maybe £20, before that it was 15 and now I think it's like 30 basically, and with a tip it might be 35 or 40 So with that, I was like, you know what? Why don't I start going back to that place I used to go to? And if I don't remember, I've mentioned before on the pod, but a few years back, way before the flipping pandemic, I used to go to this particular barbershop in the west of London. So it's about an hour's distance from where I am in the centre of London in a place called Ealing Broadway. Um, and it's, you know, a very fancy uh, barbershop. A lot of celebrities, a lot of kind of footballers from this country go and get their haircuts there. Um, a lot of rappers, a lot of artists, all that malarkey. And I used to go with it all the time to get my haircut. But traveling there, an hour there and an hour back just to get a skin fade is a little bit excessive. So over time, I got a little bit, you know, lazy of going there and I didn't really see the utility of it. But because the prices have gone up in my local area, I was like, you know what? If I'm going to be spending £30 on a haircut, I may as well go to West, you know, Ealing Broadway. So the other day I decided to jump on the train, head over to Elon Broadway and get a haircut there. And I have to be honest, I'm happy with the results. I got a little Mohican type of thing. I've got little, you know, cat scratches on the back. They cut my beard in a good way. Gave me a little, gave me a little handlebar moustache for the little hipster vibes and shit. So I'm feeling nice and feeling good about it. But it made me realise that actually it's quite important in life to spend money on things that you care about. Because I don't have a lot of things I care about, right? Obviously, I care about fashion. I care about shoes. But there are certain things in terms of your self-care that you shouldn't re- you shouldn't skimp on and you shouldn't be lazy about. So if there's something that within your self-care routine, whether it's the place that you go get your hair cut, whether it's a place where you go get your fucking hair, your fucking hair washed, whether it's somewhere you get your stuff styled, whether it's a place where you get a particular type of t-shirt that you like, or this place does a particular brand of underwear that you like, make the effort to go there and get that thing. Because when you do any sort of like, when you do any sort of concessions, when you make any kind of detours and try and figure stuff out another way, it never goes the way you like it. And I really realized for me recently, there were times where I'd go to my local boss man, my local guy around the corner, my local uncle, and he just gets stuff wrong. I don't know about you guys if it's the same, but in Afro barbers, for some reason, especially when you go to African uncles and shit, they always get little things wrong. So you ask them to cut your hair a certain way, they'll cut it another way. Like, but they'll get a tiny bit wrong. So you might say you want a high fade, they'll give you a low fade. You might say you want the the the, the sideburns thin, they'll make them wide. You might say keep the moustache quite thick, they'll make it small and turn it into a Hitler thing. They'll do these little little things wrong all the time. And then when you leave, for me personally anyway, I can't get that shit out of my head. It stays in my head and it really burns in my soul that I pay this man £30 plus tip and he just couldn't do what I wanted him to do. He had to make some little mistakes and little errors and he just grinds my gears. So for just the peace of mind and for me not to send in this guy any bad vibes and to not be a horrible person, I'd much rather pay the money to get something done properly, right? Properly 
properly somewhere where I've got peace of mind. They're going to do the job well. And I'm going to leave there like happy and proud to have a haircut. Because the worst thing that happens to me sometimes, you go to get your little skin fade, you head out, you hate the results, and then you immediately put a hat on. And I've done it plenty of times. I've, I've not liked the results, so I've started wearing a hat or on the train. I put my hood up in a strange way and I'm gone and I fucking hate it. And my hair isn't even that hard to fucking work out because all I need to get cut is the fucking sides. I don't need nothing. It's not even that difficult. So if you can't get the sides right and you can't get my facial hair right, then why should I give you any money? So I'm happy I did that, happy I made that change. And I do recommend for any of you guys who are in London or in the UK and you're looking for a place to go get your hair cut, I do highly recommend to check out this spot. Um, I've got it up here on the screen. It's called F4 Fade. So F, the letter, the number, four, and then Fade. Find them on Instagram. They've got two locations, one in West Ealing and, of course, one in Fulham. The one I go to is usually the Ealing Broadway one. They're usually really packed up and booked with fucking bookings. So you have to make sure you call them ahead of time to get a slot in there. But usually the trims are absolutely fantastic. And to be honest, I think the prices, I think, are the same as most areas in London. I think it's like £25 for a trim. I got mine. I basically gave the guy, I think, 30 or 40 or something like that for the tip as well included. And I basically made a day of it. I took my books with me. I read my Britney, the Britney Spears autobiography on the way there. I listened to a podcast and shit. I went and got, I went and got, I went and got some Lebanese food after because that area of London has a big Lebanese uh, community. So there's a lot of great little restaurants around there you can pop into and get some good food. So I made a bit of a day of it. So I do recommend. If you are in the business of getting your hair cut a certain way, especially in London, and you're pissed off with all the regular people, look, look, look at this guy's fade here. Look at this fade down here. You can see the HDness of that fade. Look at the gradient there. That's a lovely fucking gradient. And you can't get that in a lot of places in London. I know I'm making a big deal out of nothing, but I swear to God, you cannot get a regular decent trim in most parts of London. I've t I can tell you this. I've traveled far and wide. I've gone to places in North London, South London, West London, East London, and they've been terrible. Actually, to tell a lie, the best air cut or the best fade I ever got in my entire life was this one year I went to Mexico City. I went to Mexico City and I went to this random barber shop in Mexico City. The guy took like two hours to cut my hair, but I swear to God, it was the best fade I've ever gotten in my entire life. I wish I had a picture of myself then, but it was immaculate, fucking immaculate. So apart from Mexico City, the best fades I've ever gotten is from F for Fade. I really do recommend that you check it out. Um, again, um, I have to travel from where I live in fucking London all the way to fucking Ealing Broadway. It's basically an hour plus to get there because the station as well, when you get out the station, the barbershop, I think it's like a 15, 20 minute walk from there. So it's not even around the corner. So I'm really going on a fucking pilgrimage for a haircut. But for me personally, and for my peace of mind, I'd much prefer to give somebody my hard earned money to get a fade of this sort of level, right? And to make sure that it looks good. Like, look at, look at, look at this lineup. Look at this guy's lineup here on the front. Look at how good that is. Look how smooth that is, bro. Absolutely incredible. So, yeah, big up FFA. They do a really good job there. Um, I would trust every single person that's in there cutting their hair. Um, I usually go for the, the, for the, for the guy that owns the place called Franklin. Um, but everybody in there basically cuts hair really well. So you won't really be, um, in bad hands when you go there. But of course, make sure that you call up and you give them notice and stuff and you book an appointment because they're all always always busy uh, but you can go sometimes go in and have like a walk-in but for the most part i prefer to kind of make sure that i book it ahead of time just to make sure that i'm able to get in there and sometimes even look even akon was there see look akon was there man like akon you know what i mean come back music that guy was in there, bro. So big up Akon. Even Akon knows why I'll go on with the thing. So yeah, big up everybody in there. Um, and even this young man. Look at this young man. Look at this. Look at this, look how sharp this young man looks. Look at that. Absolutely HD haircut. HD of the HDs. But yeah, um, big up Effa Fade. Happy with my haircut. And to be honest, it was never a reminder of why I need to go outside more often. It was quite nice to be out the outdoors, you know, with regular people, people watching, you know, sitting down on a train, reading my book, having a bit of a good time. Like, oh, wow, everybody's outside. This is amazing, right? It was actually quite decent. I'm not going to lie. For someone that's a bit of a hermit like myself, right, that lives, you know, that that's basically um, permanently living online, <laughs> it was quite nice to be around some regular people, to hear the hustle and bustle of a barbershop, people debating and arguing about these nonsense topics and shit it was quite good i'm not gonna lie i just enjoyed it sitting down there like a strange like a guest all nice and quiet and humble aggie aggie is that you yes that's me thank you getting up and getting my little haircut sitting my fat ass in the chair it was actually quite decent i'm not gonna lie i really enjoyed it so big up f for fade for the experience big up f for fade for the blood clot experience